hello guys uh, it's actually not as hot anymore than it used to be in the last few months so uh, we've got a fairly dull weather it's a bit uh, stuffy but uh, well it was raining last night and uh, cools down a bit anyway um, yeah been a while and uh, I got a few new items actually um, the main reason why I'm coming back with all this see on the back it's not a shotgun it may looks like it but it's my first uh, grumlish stick yeah and uh, I wanted to show you a bit well I actually promised you before earlier this year that I want to go back to the uh, I'll come back to the uh, Grumlich stick, my uh, Bergstock, yeah, the Mountaineer uh, stick, and uh, yeah, I want to get a bit deeper into that issue, especially mountaineering. Yeah, look, my peak hat. It actually uh, arrived in the post today, and I want to go into that as well. Actually, this is a mountain cap, yeah, uh, with a few variation over the centuries and um, but very famous with hunting in a hunting department and uh, it's a classic item so it matches quite well uh, about the issue mountaining and changing weather yeah <laughs> um, I had a pretty sort of a pretty spot uh, in my mind not far away and actually uh, it's about the uh, environment located in my area so it's rocky it's actually limestone yeah and um, we got in the park a bit a leftover of it and um, you remember I were talking about uh, Finland and how tidy they keep the place well we are not in Finland anymore, we are in Germany now and uh, it's actually a bit a higher populated area and have a look at the background yeah, all this litter there uh, what was this? Uh, orange juice uh, bottle, coffee, coffee uh, cups and uh, obviously the old uh, bottles yeah all over the place vodka and uh, all sorts and but uh, well you could say well yeah that's just stupid idiots uh, the stupid idiots they're actually right next uh, in the neighborhood yeah and believe it or not I mean you know I got a bit uh, a run on on the doggy people yeah this is the remains of tidying up dog crap. Yeah, we got this. Um, I may show you later. They got this uh, uh, service station for these plastic bags. So people um, supposed to uh, pick up their dog's remains. Yeah, the ones that come the crap. And. Um, Deposit that, deposit that in a proper bin. Yeah, I mean uh, it's not like there aren't any. I mean we are here. It's uh, uh, just walking along. Yeah, got one bin there in the background, and if you turn around, uh, there's another one there on the far end. So. Uh, there's really is no point, but well, that's a proper neighborhood you got. Anyway, um, that's not what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about Grumley stick and my hat. Yeah, the mountain hat. Yeah, getting into that now. But, yeah, get my trusty seat pad out. Put that here on a rock because it's a bit wet. So I got my comfort. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about the Grumley stick. Yeah, uh, so uh, 
Yeah, I got my Grumley stick. Yeah, this is a three part stick. Yeah, joined together. Got the proper uh, steel tip. Yeah, for rough terrain or for. Uh, I'll show you this in a later video in detail how that works. You <laughs> probably imagine. So additionally, we got this rubber bum, which protects the tip from um, getting dull or rounded up, worn out. And I'll show you this on the other stick now. So I put this aside. Yeah, I got my rucksack here, right here, and. This is the, my first two-piece uh, Grumley stick. Yeah, uh, you can actually just screw that together like so. Yeah, it's a bit so. Just put it together, and you got this joint. Yeah. So uh, this is a uh, one meter. 70 and it's a three so 30 millimeter diameter which is a fairly lightweight one the standard one um, and the shorter one actually this uh, 170 is quite useful for stalking in the woods or for light tapping yeah hunting or just for walking for light walking and uh, when it comes to heavier work or loaded i got here my three piece uh, grumbly stick yeah you can see already see the difference where the joints are um, it's actually a 32 millimeter diameter so it's a bit chunkier obviously heavier as well and the joints they're actually according to the diameter yeah just to clear that up so um, and 32 millimeter diameter grumbly stick I got here yeah and the one I had with me in um, Finland is actually 190 yeah so it's uh, what is it 20 centimeter longer which is actually uh, it's, I have to show you that in a different go back a bit. Um, you put them side by side, you can see the difference. Um, it's actually taller than I am, while this one just goes up to my nose. Um, the purpose the purpose of um, having long mountain sticks is um, for well, easier for easier uh, uh, going up and down hills yeah you can actually use them like a row for climbing up like you know and um, yeah it's very easy it's steady sturdy um, stick and but I wanted to show you about the difference with the tip when one is used up fairly a lot the tip gets rounded up yeah it's a stainless steel tip and i use this one particularly for i must have bought it in 2014 so i have this actually already uh eight years now yeah and it served me very well and um yeah um something what is it what you get is this grumbly stick and that's why i think it's a really nice uh, piece of kit you can actually get the tip here yeah? and so you get this tip including a screw here yeah? stainless steel as a replacement and the 32 millimeter and the 30 millimeter share the same tip but not the joints yeah so they're different and uh, always having a few of this uh, bumper protection bumper 
Yeah, the British know what I mean with that. Okay, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you get the tip for spare, so it's uh, nice to have one. Um, and uh, usually it's just my, my spare kit box where I keep this. And um, just to show you, yeah, so it's a very environment friendly and um, uh, long lasting piece of kit. The nice thing with this is, um, three piece compared to the two piece is you obviously get shorter uh, pieces, yeah, which are easier to store away, yeah, put them in your pack or whatever. So for traveling, uh, put them on the airplane into your suitcase, whatever, rucksack. They don't take a lot of space, yeah? So while the two-piece obviously is a bit longer, yeah? Because <laughs> well, even if the stick itself is shorter, but the segments, they are um, obviously uh, longer compared to the three-piece, yeah? Yeah, you're looking for a price difference, obviously, but um, I put you the, the link for the um, Gramlich stick uh, where you can get them in Germany it's a Bavarian guy yeah yeah sorry he got a hefty Bavarian slang it's not to blame him it's he grown up there and that's his uh, anyway he um, still got quite a few in stock but he don't do them anymore he used all his material up so he can't do any special orders uh, he's just selling his stuff off, yeah, which is fine. And um, yeah, let's talk about mountaining. Um, you got here my hat, yeah. Um, as you may imagine, uh, yeah, I never really used to wear hats or caps, yeah. Um, at the time when I had enough hair, but I got, uh, well, I still got plenty hair, as you can see, yeah, they grow like hell, uh, but they're a bit wider spaced now, yeah, so um, to protect uh, myself from the sun, mainly, and for splatting water on my head, yeah, I got this head now. In the past, and you have seen this, I got a few plumps, bought them on the market. Um, yeah, I like this uh, beanie hat, yeah, it's a merino hat. This in particular is a Hubertus Loden woolly beanie hat. Usually I use it, if I'm not having it on my hat, I'm using it to rub the camera up. Yeah, because it's really soft and it fits, it's like, it just fits in my fist, yeah? So it's very handy, but, um, yeah, let's go back to this uh, peak hat. It's actually made of Loden, the same material than the Lopu and the wetter flag I got, yeah? So it's wool, 100% wool, and the design is uh, goes back to 1800 something yeah and uh, comes a bit the history uh, say it's actually coming from the far east yeah um, called uh, what was it <laughs> uh, Bashlik Bashlik yeah um, they're saying it's related to Turkish head which means head or something so um, they got this um, woolly hat, yeah, and um, this particular model, yeah, it hasn't got a tall front, which is more the um, Austrian, and that's why I'm saying it's coming from the 1800 something model. It's um, the earlier style, yeah, more sporty, the peak isn't as long, yeah. Um, the Kaiserreich, the Austrian Kaiserreich, the Hungarian Austrian 
Kaiserreich used this for the mountain hunting, his hunting uh, guards. Yeah, um, they obviously had them in, in brown, uh, green. Yeah, and uh, because at the time they were more in, in hunting green, and um, yeah. So I got this one. It's actually made. Oh, just before I get into it, um, where I got it from. Um, later on in what was the 20s and 30s yeah the shape actually changed and you may have seen some of the German Wehrmacht they used them extensively but uh, just because they were very common at the time and um, they were widely used as, as working cap or um, wood wood chopping uh, like you know people they were working on the land or in the woods they used this sort of uh, caps yeah because they were easy and just fold them away and uh, yeah it's wool and uh, lightweight and uh, so they use this as different uh, shapes with taller um, uh, tops and longer peaks yeah and maybe it's with different uh, you, you see this iconic uh, uh, what is the eagle thing on the top yeah and sort of that's the most common but um, yeah that's uh, but farmers they use them quite often and I remember uh, some of my family members they use them on a tractor or in a field and I've seen them live and yeah so they were widely used as a working cap and um, but so yeah this particular model is supplied by a German company and I put the link down there called uh, Jagd Fever. Yeah, it's actually written like well the British and the English speaking the Americans they would pronounce it fiber, Jagd Fiber because it's E E but it means hunting. Um, no 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 fever is it's like a fever, fever. It's hunting fever translated word to word. Yeah. So it's uh, Jagd Fieber, that's the company they supply them, where you can order them, put the link down there. But it's actually made by, and I'll try to get it right, Paul and, oh, what was it? Paul and Klosterhus. Yeah, they're making this. It's a little Bavarian company. They making all uh, loading stuff. Actually, they stitching trousers, trousers and jacket, similar to this one as well. Yeah, unwrapped, but uh, it's a bit darker uh, color than the Lopu. It probably comes from a different uh, maker. They call it actually uh, Sweden loading. Yeah, it's a bit thicker. And uh, another thing to this caps, the Finnish people. They actually even use them up today. Yeah, it's a working hat. It's widely used not only in the German Wehrmacht at the time. Uh, it was just a period in between. So, um, yeah, and you can actually, I have tried that. Um, you can pull the back down over your ears, yeah, to get, if it's getting get really cold. And, um, uh, yeah, I have to get used to that. And yeah, it's 100% wool. Yeah, it got uh, real horn um, buttons on the front. Some people uh, put uh, metal buttons on or whatever. Yeah, or horn stuck. Actually, not stuck. It's uh, what was it? Uh, antler. Yeah, the uh, red deer antler and uh, depending on the style but if you look at this one it's the top is uh, oops let's try this uh, it's actually more flattish yeah so not like the military one they go up like that to the front yeah so that this one is actually this bit is taller yeah it's then uh, more impressive if you stand in front of someone and he got this tall hat yeah so uh, but this is a hunting working cap so i'm quite pleased with that and um, 
So yeah, it's 100% wool and uh, used in the mountains. Ooh, talking a bit too much. I've got my plums now. Mm. Yeah, this is just a stone. That can go in the wild. But not the plastic bags, huh? Oh. I've <sighs> uh, been yucking a bit again and uh, yeah got my field bottle in arm yeah the canteen so you can see that in full glory while I'm having a rest and a bit of walk and um, hmm. <sighs> yeah it's always good having a drink well, not a drink, <laughs> yeah, a zip of water, it's a bit of water. So, uh, my canteen in action, yeah, a bit. My new hat, the Bushlick. Bushlick, yeah, I have to get used to that. Um, so, you're gonna see this for in the next few times, or in the next few videos, probably, uh, while it's getting colder now. Yeah, we got end of August. Um, almost well we get a glimpse a glimpse of uh, autumn now and um, another thing yeah you can you can have this cap like that yeah it's, can have, see and fits my kit now very well so it's hundred percent wool yeah and uh, yeah, Paul and Kloster, Klosterhus, Klosterhus. It's it's a Dutch name, yeah. yeah I can't pronounce it properly. Anyway, um, so hope you've seen some of it about my Grumley stick, yeah, and uh, why I'm using that. Actually, a little secret about why I'm using it. Not because it's fashionable or it's uh, a cool thing to have. Um, I had a serious back injury during a motorcycle accident in 2014. So it's eight years ago. Yeah, I got some titanium screws, actually four titanium screws in my spine. Yeah, and some rods going up supporting the spine and uh, that's why I started using the stick um, even today when I came up here I just tripped just kicked over with my foot a bit yeah so I can actually secure just catch myself on the stick instead of falling over which is another good reason for having a stick like that and especially yeah in the outdoors when you go in uneven um, terrain it's actually um, very helpful and especially when you are loaded with the rucksack you got so much weight and as soon as you lose balance with the weight it just drops you yeah so the stick actually can catch you and uh, to prevent any harm coming to you so hope you enjoyed try to keep it short today and uh, yeah one last uh, threat to you <laughs> because this uh, company Jagd Fieber yeah Paul and uh, Klosterhus they uh, as I mentioned they do trousers and actually last year I ordered two pairs of trousers loden trousers they are heavier material than this one and they're hunting trousers and um, but it hasn't been cold enough to put them on properly 
actually, uh, yeah, last winter I, I used one of it, and um, but since I started with this video stuff, it was just not cold enough to to wear them. So uh, that's something I gonna into soon. Yeah, as soon we get all the screen is gone, and uh, eventually getting white. Yeah, uh, the icing. We're gonna see some trousers made by Paul and Klosterhus. Yeah, so when you're interested, then look at the links down there, and you find all the infos. Back home, having a nice cup of tea, as usually, and uh, yeah, I mean, this is quite a nice spot, but uh, it's a shame people leaving all the litter behind. Uh, I only throw the plum stones into the woods, in the bush, and that's it. So, this is the other side of the lake actually, you know, that's in the background, there's a, the mill we have been before, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, check out the, uh, the links below, you may find it interesting for your own hunting purpose, or just because they are really good quality clothing items and uh, I can I wouldn't make all this fuss about this uh, stuff but I'm very convinced about the kit and otherwise I wouldn't spend money on it and uh, keep on using it so yeah that's for the weekend enjoy and have fun yeah here you can see you got this uh, suspender or supply box supply box for dog crap but people while well, they're actually using this bag and they're picking up the dog's crap and then throw it into the bush uh, what is the point I mean you got this uh, bins right next to it and uh, but well just putting the crap in plastic and then put it in the landscape and that's not a good idea is it bye bye